In this video, I am going to explain about force analysis of spur gates. According to law of gearing, the resultant force Pn acts along the common normal. The angle made by the common normal is pressure angle. So that means resultant force Pn will act along the pressure angle alpha. If you split this Pn into its rectangular components, then one component will act along the tangential direction that is called as Pt. Another component Pr will act along the radial direction of the gate teeth that we are calling as PR. So PT is the tangential component. This tangential component determines the magnitude of the torque. That means whatever amount of torque you want to transmit that is decided by the PT value. So that's why PT tangential component determines the magnitude of torque. From torque you will get power. Power equal to 2 pi n mt by 16. Then this PR is called as a separating force. Always this PR used to separate the two gear wheels. To compensate the separating force PR, we use it to place bearings and we will keep that shaft inside those bearings. Then this analysis is based on the following assumptions. Only one pair of teeth is taking the total load. Analysis is valid for static conditions only. The advantage of assuming like this is, I will tell a simple example. Suppose you are giving 100 kg load to one person to carry it from one place to another place. But in your absence, that person is taking the help of second person. Then now how many people are taking the 100 kg load? Two people. What is the load carried by each person? 50 kg only. But you are assuming that only one person is taking the total load. That's why you won't give much load to him. You assume that he can carry only 100 kg, that's why you will give less than 100 kg weight to that particular person. But he is taking the help of second person. So when whatever amount of load you are giving that is distributed by two people, then it is very safe that two people can easily carry. Here also the same thing, actually two pair of teeth are taking the total load. But you are assuming that only one teeth is taking the total load. That's why you won't give much load to this particular teeth. Okay. Then gate teeth will run safely without any breakage. That is the advantage of first assumption. Second assumption is all this derivation is valid for static conditions only because we are not taking any dynamic loads. That means the load which is varying with time or jerk, that kind of loads we are not taking that's why this is valid for static conditions only later we will consider the dynamic loads okay now how to find pt value this pt value we can obtain from power how to get power means power equal to 2 pi n mt by 60 this power you will get from moment how to get moment moment equal to force into distance here the force is pt distance is p circle diameter so, P circle diameter and Pt from this you will get empty, from empty you will get power. Suppose power is known, from the power you will get empty. Once empty is known, from that you will get Pt. In that way we will determine the tangential component Pt value. Okay. Power transmitted is given by power equal to 2 pi n empty by 16 to 10 power 6. Now, from this you can get the empty value. Rearrange this equation, you will get the empty value mt equal to 16 to this 7, 10 power 6 into power by 2 pi n. Directly you will get this in Newton mm. That's why you are taking this 10 power 6. Okay. This n is in rpm, mt is in Newton mm. Now, mt is known. How to get pt? mt equal to pt into d by 2. d is p circle diameter. Now, how to get pt? Again, rearrange this equation. pt equal to 2 into mt by d. Directly you will get PT value in Newtons. Here D value will be in mm. Okay. Now how to get PR radial component? For that you have to take the help of this diagram. So here if you take the tan alpha value, tan alpha equal to opposite side PR by Edison side PT. PR by PT. From this you will get PR equal to PT into tan alpha. Then if you take cos alpha that is Pt Edison side by hypotenuse Pn. Then Pn equal to Pt by cos alpha you will get. In this way we will get the radial component 
and axial component.